There are different ways that we can teach these machine learning systems. One way is that a specialist of some kind screens the data, him or herself, and teaches the system. So it's seeing, and again, I use vibration data because this is a very common application in this field right now. Um, it, uh, you know, you might see a lot of vibration data, but when you start to see the bearing condition change or it becomes out of balance or the gears start to fail or whatever it is, um, the specialist might tell the system that that's what this change of data means. It could potentially tell it how the specialist knows that that's the situation, but otherwise it can just, you know, the specialist can say, okay, um, now you're seeing data with this condition, now you're seeing data with that condition, and the system figures out for itself what that means, how to interpret. And it may uh, learn about the condition in the same way that we do, you know, look at spectral peaks and all the rest of it, or it might make the determination some other way. One classic example of this is that, um, you know, medical specialists have been using, have been analyzing mammograms for many, many years. And they've had, and I forget the exact numbers, but say five different telltale signs that a woman might have breast cancer. So they said, well, we've got all this data, all these mammograms, and we have all the um, uh, diagnoses that specialists made and the outcomes. They fed that to one of these systems and it said, okay, and it, it figured out, but it actually found that there were six ways to determine if a person may have breast cancer. So there was another telltale sign there, another symptom that could be seen in that data that humans had never recognized before, but these systems determined it. So it's the system figuring it out for itself. Anyway, uh, another way to do it is that the system itself learns what the data means. So for example, in our maintenance world, the system might be watching vibration data and, and other parameters, and then watches your computerized maintenance management system and says, oh, look, they're generating a work order to replace the bearing or to balance the machine or you know whatever. And it therefore works out that, wow, that change in data that I saw must mean that the bearing needs to be changed and so on. And there are systems out there like that right now uh, working in that way we just have to hope that the people put the right information into the CMMS, otherwise it learns the wrong thing. And that's one of the problems that I have found. Um, look, there are, this is a, a big topic and we can't spend all the time on it, but the system might simply state, look, there's a change. Uh, we're, we're looking at the data, um, we've learned what normal looks like, and then when it begins to change, it can simply say, okay, there is a change, send in a, a specialist, a technician, or just pull the machine out and find out what's wrong, you know, physically if, if you've got standby equipment. So that's another way I can look at it. How does it apply to vibration analysis and condition monitoring and so on? One way, and you know, I, that's just a stock standard picture of a compressor. It's nothing about this particular company. But uh, OEMs, you know, equipment suppliers can create these systems just for their equipment. So they've got enough of these uh, pieces of equipment running around the world. They collect the data. They recognize um, when different situations exist, including that it's not being operated correctly or if there's any field or on-site maintenance required, whether it's being performed. But they can therefore say, not only will we provide this piece of equipment, but we'll provide a system that'll um, help uh, um, ensure that it's being operated correctly or schedule the necessary maintenance. In fact, rather than selling you the equipment, they may just sell you air in this particular case and say, well, we will take care of everything because we've got artificial intelligence and, and we will maintain and, and everything the system. So that's one application of all of this. Another application is that the system is already designed to understand common equipment and the fault conditions. So you might buy a prepackaged system, and they are available today, that will take your vibration readings, um, look at that data, and and make a statement about the severity 
of the condition and the nature of the condition. Uh, perhaps with an analyst you know, from the company that sold the, the equipment or your own analyst looking at that data, reviewing it and then saying, well, um, yes, I am now confident that the system was correct. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, the system might um, you know, collect the data and itself, all by itself, learn about your equipment, learn about you know whether it's running correctly or not. And that sort of system is um, particularly useful with the more unusual equipment and uh, unique, like robotic equipment or some sort of mining equipment that isn't very common. Um, the artificial intelligence system might have to learn about you know, identifying fault conditions because that information may not be known by the supplier of the vibration system. Anyway, the challenge, of course, with any sort of system is it must have access to the data. And so these days, you know, vibration monitoring systems, particularly online systems, have access to that data. But unless you've got sensors that can look at infrared and oil analysis or ultrasound and other technologies online all the time, the artificial intelligence system can only use what it's got. There are some systems that will pick up the data, you know, if it's measured every 30 days or something like that and, and do analysis on that. Um, that can work as well for sure and there's products like that but it's particularly useful and when we talk about the future of industry 4.0 and so on um, you know that's what they're really looking at you um, monitor all the equipment 24 7 and and it is able to make maintenance and operational decisions because it has access to all, all that information and what's really changed what what has made all this possible is that there are now far more affordable uh, wireless sensors available these days. So we can afford to put the sensors on the equipment to uh, make the data available. Of course, there's now far more intelligent software available to do this kind of thing. Um, and then very fast computers, networks, and massive data storage. I guess the other enabler there you know, looking at it the other way is the the cost of people, you know, like the, the labor costs to take measurements and the risks that a person faces when monitoring certain types of equipment, you know, it, it becomes, it means this is even more important.